Florida week rolls on. We've got the PFF grades from last game and two very important guests coming up here on today's show. Wednesday's Locked On Balls. It happens right now. You are Locked On Balls, your daily podcast on the Tennessee Volunteers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, everybody? Welcome into it. This is Locked on Vols, your go-to Tennessee Volunteers podcast each and every day, a part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. As always, it is your first listen. It is your first watch on YouTube. Please subscribe and follow me on Twitter at underscore Kaner and at Locked on Vols. So, got plenty to get into today. I'm your host, Eric Kane. I write for the uh, the On3 site covering Tennessee. That's fallquest.com. If you're new to the show, welcome to it. Hope you enjoy. And, of course, I'm your host right here at Locked on Vols. You see me on Thursday nights in the Knoxville market doing a little rivalry Thursday. And that's a whole lot of fun and uh, looking forward to a big game coming up tomorrow. But big game on Saturday. That is Tennessee and Florida. The SEC opener, of course, it's all we're talking about. Two guests coming up. Josh Ward in segment one or segment two and Boogie Bentley of Talking Balls. That's coming up in segment three. We're talking all things Florida uh, here as we get closer to kickoff. But first, I want to bring the PFF grades, looking back at Akron a little bit. Let's tie a bow on that. Let's not mention Akron again. Uh, we got bigger, bigger issues and bigger fish to fry here uh, this week. But you guys do like the PFF grades, so I'm going to bring it to you just a little bit. Looking at the offensive side of the football, Joe Milton graded out the highest, 88.5%. Had a really, really nice day, of course, in relief. I think he was four for five, had two touchdowns, beautiful deep balls thrown. No doubt about it on offense, he graded out the highest at 88.5. Remember, that is very much above average player. Adorno Wright grades out at 83.9. Had a good day run blocking as well. Hendon Hooker, who got the start at quarterback, of course, 81.5. A good day for Hendon Hooker. Taven Jackson graded out number four overall. I mean, there were tons of guys who played on offense, guys, really in this football game. 31 players played on offense or took an offensive snap. So I'm not going to hit everybody, but... um, you continue to work yourself down, and of course, some of the backups that the reps are, you know, obviously smaller than the uh, than the starters. They, you know, are kind of ranked higher towards the top. Uh, Jalen Hyatt's forty eight snaps, seventy eight point nine was his grade. Had a fantastic day, super efficient. Five catches, uh, or five targets, five catches, one hundred and sixty five yards, two touchdowns. Looked really good. Jacob Warren, a good day for the tight ends. He as well as with Princeton fans, seventy seven point seven percent. Uh, was his grade that is considered a starter grade score white got in there at number 11 uh, he had a good day you move on down Jalen Wright comes in at number 12 on the offense 73.5 was his grade I uh, thought he was pretty efficient average over four yards a carry on 23 attempts still way too many carries for Jalen Wright in that football game but nonetheless you did what you had to do Javante Spragans comes in at number 16 67.5 was his grade and remember uh, the grading system looks like this uh, below 50 is a backup level player. 50 to 59 is below average starter. S- uh, 60 to 69 is an average starter. 70 to 79 is above average starter. 80 to 89 is good. And 90 to 99 is considered an elite grade. We continue to move on and look at the Tennessee offense. Cooper Mays, 67% on the day, comes in at number 17. Jerome Carvin. At number 20, 65.6, that's easily his best grade so far per Pro Football Focus, which, again, it's not everything. Take it with a grain of salt. It is what it is. Uh, But Jerome Carvin, easily his best grade of the season at 65.6. Jabari Small didn't play an awful lot, so I'm not even going to say his his, uh, grade. Princeton Fant, 63.1. I mentioned the tight ends had a pretty good day. That's a a good grade for Princeton Fant at 63.1. Cedric Tillman, before going out with injury, 59.1. And... That's pretty much all of the uh, the, the guys that are uh, you know starters or, or key contributors. So pretty good day overall for Tennessee offensively. If you want to look at the run blocking, the protection, stuff like that, pass blocking again, it's been a really good story. Gerald Mincy has been the best pass blocker on this football team through three weeks. He graded out with an 83.9% in terms of pass blocking. Jerome Carvin, 82.4. Uh, Javante Spragans, 82.4. Darnell Wright, 80.7. And you had Cooper Mays, who was all the way down there at 66.3. But again, that's that's not a bad grade, if you will. Uh, Jalen Wright, he was he went into 13 reps of pass blocking and, and picked them up. And 79.4 was Jalen Wright's grade in terms of pass protection. I thought that was really, really good for him. Uh, look at the pressure and how the quarterbacks did in terms of 
uh, throwing the football. Tennessee quarterbacks overall. Um, this is Joe Milton and Hendon Hooker together. And of course, Milton only had five pass attempts, but uh, they were kept clean on 85% of dropbacks. So good on the offensive line. Under pressure, only 15% of the time. They were not blitz 55% of the time. They were blitz 45% of the time. Tennessee shined 88% in terms of the quarterbacks when they were kept clean. When they were under pressure, only 45.3, a little low, especially in a game like this. Not blitz 79.1. Win blitz 75.6 was the percentage in terms of um, uh, in terms of completing passes. So looking good there in terms of the pro football focus grades. All right, let's shift our focus over to defense. And again, in a normal game, I will I will go very much more in depth. I guess I'll have one more note on the offensive side. Uh, Jerome Carvin was the best. Uh, you know, he and Gerald Mincy again. You know, really good at pass protection as far as run blocking per PFF. Cooper May sixty four point nine. Carvin 62.4 and Spragan 64.8 had the highest grades. This is a better pass blocking team than a run blocking team through three games. So obviously you want to run the football to be successful in SEC play. Tennessee will need to pick it up in that regard. Let's look at defense again. You know, in a game like next week when we go over the pro football focus grades, I'll I'll be very much more in detail. But this was an Akron game. You know, it is what it is. Let's get in, get out, right? <laughs> Just like we were supposed to uh, in that football game without any injuries. But unfortunately, uh, Tennessee found some injuries. But again, that is football. Uh, Deshaun Rucker played a whole lot. First action of the season. Been dealing with a little bit of an injury since camp. He had 28 overall reps and graded out at 80.2%, the highest grade on defense. That was good to see. Tamari McDonald, 78.6, the second highest uh, player graded out for Tennessee's defense. Kamal Haddon, 74.5%. You're seeing a lot of these DBs up top. That's good to see. Uh, Tyree West had 22 reps, 67.5% was his grade. Elijah Herring, two sacks on one drive, a freshman that stood out. He graded out at 67.2%, which is really good. Brandon Turnage, 15 reps, 662 Again, another defensive back and a guy with the injuries at cornerback right now with Warren Burrell and, and some others, D. Williams. You know, Brandon Turnage, might be asked to play a lot more snaps even this week. So it was good to see him have a pretty decent day in terms of the pro football focus grading scale. Jalen McCullough, 46 snaps, 64.8% was his grade. Um, Christian Charles, who got the start at cornerback, of course, 64.1%. He's going to have to continue to grow up and grow up in a hurry with Florida coming to town. We'll continue to go on to some, uh, to some guys who started football games. Amari Thomas, 60.5% was his grade. He played 23 reps. Uh, Juwan Mitchell, who got the start at middle linebacker, 29 reps, 57.1. Uh, Ryan John Marie earlier this week, in fact, it was yesterday, said that he was pleased with the way Juwan Mitchell played. He hadn't played football in basically a year, you know, almost to the day. And he said he communicated well. He was flying around. He was pleased with his performance. Uh, he was a little erratic at times, but again, that's just kind of getting back into the game flow. Tyler Barron graded out at sixty at fifty six point eight percent. He played twenty two reps. See the, the rep count, except for the two safeties, as always, and they weren't even that high this week. The rep count's been pretty minimal this week. Of course, it was against Akron. Uh, Byron Young played thirty four snaps. Fifty five point three percent was his grade per pro, pro football focus. Aaron Beasley, 25 reps, 54.8%. Uh, he had been up towards the top the previous two weeks. Karat Garland, defensive lineman, 44.9%. Not his best day per the pro football focus. And Trayvon Flowers, who was the second highest grader against Pittsburgh, remember a week ago, uh, PFF does not like Trayvon Flowers this week, giving him a grade of 44.2. Uh, quickly, let's check the coverages. Um, the the uh, the coverage chart for the guys in the secondary, and then we will get on to our guests here for this show. Um, targets. Tamari McDonald was targeted four times in coverage. He gave up three receptions for 30 yards. Deshaun Rucker was targeted three times, gave up two receptions for three yards. You had Kamal Haddon, who was targeted four times in coverage, gave up two receptions for 10 yards. You had Christian Charles targeted three times, gave up one reception for 22 yards. Remember, nobody gave up a touchdown. Uh, Akron did not find the end zone whatsoever. Uh, Jalen McCullough was targeted in coverage three times, gave up two receptions for eight yards. Wesley Walker targeted two times, gave up two receptions for 28 yards. Um, Solon Page was targeted four times, gave up four receptions for 32 yards. Jeremy Banks four times, gave up three receptions for 19 yards. 
And Trayvon Flowers targeted two times, gave up one reception for negative one yard. So again, anyway, I'm not going to spend too much time on the PFF grades for Akron because, well, again, it is Akron, but uh, it's not everything, but it helps tell a greater story. What we learned again is Gerald Mincy continues to be a really, really good pass protector for this Tennessee offense. All right, let's get into it. We got Josh Ward coming up next. Later in the show, we got Boogie Bentley at Talking Balls coming up and really, really looking forward to that as we continue on here on Locked on Balls. But first, I do want to remind you guys about our friends over at LinkedIn. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. You just go ahead and put your job on there, add your job, put the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you are indeed hiring. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on the candidate with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and then ultimately hire. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering high quality hires versus leading competitors. Listen to this, guys. LinkedIn jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster and for free. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash college. Sorry, let me try that again. LinkedIn.com slash locked on college. That's LinkedIn.com slash locked on college one more time because i messed it up the first time linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free terms and conditions do apply it's wednesday so you know what time that means it is josh ward wednesday time right here on locked on balls josh it is florida week how you feeling how you know how what's what's the animosity level what's the pessimism level and what's the excitement level as we move throughout this week yeah, I feel good. Uh, energy is there, which I love. This is why we do what we do. Talking about Tennessee, covering Tennessee, uh, filling hours upon hours during the offseason for weeks like this where the fan buildup is huge. Uh, I was reminded during Tuesday's Josh and Swain that it is not Florida week. It's Gator Hater Week by yeah. a listener to the show. And uh, th there are different levels of optimism, but I am sensing a lot of optimism. Some is maybe a, a little more than other fans want to hear because you don't want it to get too over the top. Others are saying, now I think this is going to be a close one. This is the Florida game, but optimism, energy, riding high for Florida week. I mean, that's it should. I, I just look at, um, I look at Tennessee's team and I think they're a better football team. Now, let's not forget, just like how everybody, myself included to an extent, I'm not going to lie, overreaction, Ari, to the, the, to the Utah win in week one. Sure. This is still the same football team. There's still talent on that roster. As bad as Anthony Richardson has played, uh, he's still a very dynamic passer. Uh, mm -hmm. so a dynamic quarterback that can get it get it done, I believe, through the air. He just hadn't shown it. And, of course, we know what he can do with his legs. So it's going to be a close football game. It always is. But the main storyline throughout the week, Cedric Tillman's availability, Jabari Small's availability, Dylan Sampson's availability. The one thing you didn't want from a game like Akron's to get anybody hurt. Unfortunately, that's football. What would it mean? Would it change your viewpoint on this football game, say, if Cedric Tillman was a no-go come this weekend? Well, yeah, it changes my thoughts on what Tennessee can do offensively. I, I would say the Tuesday-Wednesday portion of the week in practice is looking at what other options they have. Do they look at Jalen Hyatt on the outside? What can Ramel Keaton get done within the offense? How do they maybe change what they ask of Brew McCoy, do, does he go to the other side? I think they look at other options there because Cedric is so important in what they do. I mean, Eric, look at the Pittsburgh game. Look at the amount of targets that Cedric got in that game. That's your only Power 5 game that you've played this season, and that showed us what Hinden Hooker and Tennessee's coaches think about what Cedric can do within the offense. So, yeah, it changes the conversation. I don't think it drastically affects Tennessee's chances to have offensive success because with or without Tillman, I would say, Running the football is going to matter, and that can bring us to the availability and the effectiveness of uh, Jabari Small and then Dylan Sampson, how he would factor in as well. But Tillman's one of the best wide receivers in the country. I, I think a, a fully healthy 12-game schedule would give Cedric Tillman some at least Bolitnikoff Award talk. He would have that kind of chance with the numbers he can put up in the offense. So uh, what he's able to do, 
uh, down the field, hit the physical ability he has with the way Florida will likely try to defend. Tillman is really important, but the, the way this offense is set up, the way Josh Heupel can scheme for wide receivers to get open, you just, you know, Tillman's a proven guy. The other players we'll talk about are less proven, and that's what scares you. Uh, but you compare it to Florida, and you know, I'd, without Tillman, I'd still probably take Tennessee's receivers against what Florida has at that position based on what we've seen so far. Yeah, but it's intriguing, though, because the strength of this Florida football team is its secondary. The strength of Tennessee, mm -hmm. one of the strengths is the passing game, obviously. So, you sure. know, Hooker would rather have a guy like Tillman in there. And if Tillman can't go, um, I do believe two of the scenarios you kind of laid out there, I think you could see that a little bit. I think you could see Hyatt play around moving to the outside a little bit to get a squirrel in there in the slot or maybe somebody else. Also, I think that you will see if – if Tillman's a no-go, I think you will see Brew McCoy flip over that right side so they can pair him with Hyde a little bit to the dominant side for Hooker. There'll be some different scenarios of where you'll try to mask that loss, but it's a huge loss. So, you know, we'll see. And Jacob Warren is on. an important pass catcher in this offense. Princeton Fant is a guy that factors in. So they have other uh, options, guys with size. And, you know, linebackers a question for Florida this week. So maybe that's a spot where Tennessee figures we can create some matchup advantages there. So it hurts Tennessee if Tillman can't go. Nobody's going to say otherwise. But Tennessee does have options. That's why you bring Brew McCoy in. And, it, it you know, back in August, especially after we found out he was going to be good to go, Eric, one of my thoughts was if something happens to Tillman, which nobody wanted to see happen, there's another guy that has, you know, number one, number two skill level yeah. that can help if that happens. And we might see this Saturday if that truly really is the case. Let's just not get called for two OPIs in this football game, right? One yeah, it was a little bit of, you know, the push off. Sure. But I mean, it, it's it's pretty common if the ball is thrown in front of the line of scrimmage, stop blocking. Right. We've seen that two weeks, uh, two weeks already this football season. Yeah. We, I mean, that has been that tells me, Eric, that it's something that referees are probably looking for. I'm yep. guessing that's been brought to their attention, uh, which Tennessee would know in, at this point because it's happened too many times. Josh Heupel will tell you. So that is something to to pay attention to, because in this kind of game, uh, yeah, it matters all the time. But if, if you think this is going to be a close game or you think you have an offensive advantage, don't take away from what you're able to do to help Florida. Uh, field position can still matter. If they can get you in a, a longer yardage situation to go, that becomes a spot where maybe they can make a play that makes a difference from the defensive side. So those th those things matter in this kind of game for sure. It almost cost Tennessee the game at Pittsburgh two weeks earlier. Well, think about the Pittsburgh game last year. Think about the Florida game last year. Uh, penalized over 10 times. I mean, it killed Tennessee, right, among yeah. some other things. And uh, Josh Heibel's mentioned that a couple of times. They got to play cleaner. It affects the way you coach on third and fourth down on punt situations. Um, Tennessee can't be penalized 10 plus times for over 100 yards. Just can't. Uh, kind of on that note with the injuries, you know, Dylan Sampson banged up against Akron. Jabari Small banged up against Akron. We'll have to see about their status as the week goes on. I Again, this is me. I'm not a trainer or anything, and, and this is no inside scoop. Just for me, I feel better mm -hmm. about those two, Small in particular, than I, than I do about Tillman. But we'll see as the week goes on. But there's going to be opportunity there for Tennessee's run game. I'm intrigued to see what Tennessee's run game truly is because you ran for over 200 yards against Akron and Ball State. Okay, cool. Didn't even really try to run the football against Pittsburgh. There's opportunity there. South Florida, along with the mobile quarterback, nearly put up 300 yards on the ground against Florida. Uh, Utah ran for, what was it, 230 yards against Florida. I'm intrigued to see what Tennessee's run game looks like against Florida because it you know, really opens everything up if you can count on getting four to five yards of pop, and that's what Tennessee's going to be after. Yeah, it would make a big difference, and um, I'm – you know, I'm curious going in, Kentucky didn't have as much success, but they were limited personnel-wise. Uh, availability versus effectiveness, again, can come back to that running back position. And Jabari Small is a guy that we talked about at the beginning of the season of, hey, watch out for what he might be able to do, and he hasn't done much to this point. And part of that has been not being able to be out there. But uh, Florida's defense is susceptible, especially if Ventrell Miller cannot play this week at linebacker. I, that, I just think that makes a big difference for what they're able to do, mistakes they might make. And uh, guys that made mistakes this past Saturday might clean that up based on seeing film. But, Eric, I'm going to test them to see if they can. So running the football, I think, is vital. And uh, let's not assume Tennessee will pass with great success for four quarters. It could happen. And if so, then I'm not sure that the running game is going to matter. But my guess is that at some point you probably run into uh, some kind of slow spurt on defense or excuse me on in the passing game and you're going to rely on that running game to attack Florida's defense so that's a really important part of this and just in general Josh Heupel's run game doesn't get the amount of talk that 
it probably deserves because of how important it is. So the opportunity has been there for opponents to run against Florida. Tennessee should expect to be able to do that this week. Yeah, one comment, then one more question. I'll get you out of here. I don't expect to see much of uh, Desmond Watson, the big 415-pounder um, in the interior defensive line. It, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't remember seeing him play much last year against Tennessee. Just the pacing and the flow of the game and the way Tennessee's offense goes, that might be one big body that Cooper Mays and Jerome Carvin and Spragans don't have to worry about a lot in a football game, but you know we'll have to see. Yeah, that that could be position on the field, maybe you know, depending on the spot that he might be more useful, depending on uh, if it's uh, if Tennessee gets the ball in a, a red zone opportunity versus uh, going, trying to go the length of the field. I wonder if situational uh, play will matter there. Yeah, I agree. All right, last thing, and maybe this is an oversimplification, and, and we're all you know we're all uh, guilty of that sometimes. But I just look at this matchup. Tennessee's got a quarterback that's humming it. Florida's got a quarterback that has all the potential in the world, but gosh, has no confidence is playing like crap this year. Um, I do think he's hurt. I really do. And, and I think we're going to find out if Anthony Richardson truly is hurt. They keep saying that he's not hurt down there in Florida. If he's healthy, they will dial it up and they will scheme some things for him to run the football. Kenny Pickett ran, Emory Jones ran, Matt Corral ran, Bryce Young a little bit ran. I mean, Tennessee struggled last year defending the mobile quarterback. Um, I think if Tennessee can bottle him up and keep him in the pocket, just like Kentucky did, this defense is going to have a good day enforcing tough decisions on Anthony Richardson. I just think it comes down to Hendon Hooker playing mm -hmm. well, Anthony Richardson playing bad. If those trends continue, I think Tennessee can get a win here. I agree. Fans know about either quarterbacks, backup quarterbacks, players that they hadn't heard of before kickoff, either coming into Neyland Stadium or for the Vols are on the road, especially in this series having a career day. They've experienced it too many times. Even a, a 2014 situation where it's a low-scoring game, Trayon Harris, who's not a great passer, comes in off the bench and gets two scores for Florida, and they win 10-9. to nine. Tennessee fans have seen it too many times. But in this case, with what this offense is capable of doing and how good Hendon Hooker is, a difference would be that Tennessee didn't have this offense in 2014. Uh, I, I think it should be too much of an advantage for the Vols at Neyland Stadium with a crowd that is going to be insane. And I think Tennessee should win and will win the game. This is also a never assume. And uh, optimism is warranted, excitement. You know, even if you have Tennessee by multiple scores, at the beginning of the week, Eric, I was a couple of scores on Tennessee's side here. Tillman's availability has me questioning that. But I do think Tennessee is the better team and should show that it's the better team. And it, yeah, I mentioned Miller earlier. If he can't go, it's like we're talking about the quarterback position. It's like one of their quarterbacks on defense can't go, and I, I think that would be a big advantage to Tennessee. So I do like the Vols this week to get it done and to – you're not breaking all of the Florida curses that you feel like have existed, but you're you're feeling a lot better and you're setting yourself up for a chance to turn this into a big season. Yeah, and speaking with Zach Alper, Alperdi of uh, Gators Online on Sunday night on the uh, Rocky Top Rewind, uh, doesn't believe that Miller will be a go. So, again, mm -hmm. things can change, obviously – Injuries are fluid, but uh, that would be huge. He He's the captain. He calls all the plays. Yep. Um, on the offensive side, the backup quarterback is John Kitna's boy. Uh, not a very mobile guy, but, but uh, you know, again, that, that's that been one of the most popular questions all week long. Who's the backup quarterback? The, the Ohio State transfers out, so that's who it is behind Anthony Richardson. Only three more sleeps, Josh, and then it's Tennessee and Florida. Plenty to come up on Josh and Swain this week. Uh, what do you got coming up? Obviously, just a whole lot of Gator talk. Yeah, a lot of Tennessee, Florida, good insight from Jason Swain, some VFLs who have been able to stop by the show. So a uh, lot of Tennessee, Florida talk. Uh, you can search Josh and Swain if you want to go back and listen to any of our episodes. And speaking of which, I encourage you to go back and listen to all their episodes, but in particular, the Tuesday afternoon afternoon episode right at the end in the last segment, the power poll. Josh, give me your go-to game day sign to make fun of Florida. So uh, I'll give you my top two. Uh, this one, I think, got a good reaction. Uh, it's playing on what Steve Spurrier said a couple of decades ago. You can't spell Billy without two L's. This would be their second loss if Tennessee beats them this Saturday. So yeah. that one. And then the other one I said would be the picture of Tim Tebow when he was working out at Tennessee's facility wearing the UT gear. He's shaking hands with Brian Randolph. And then you can caption it with something along the lines of even Tebow knows, knows who's going to win this week. So uh, go with the Gators this week. Have fun on campus with College Game Day coming to town. Big opportunity in Knoxville. Follow him on Twitter, Josh underscore Ward. Listen to him on the Sports Animal, noon to three every weekday, again on 99.1, the Sports Animal. Josh, thanks so much, buddy. You got it. Thank you.
All right, that is Ward Wednesday with our buddy Josh Ward. All right, we've got Boogie Bentley coming up next here. Talking Vols, you guys love that show, and you listen to both of us. So I was on his show last night. He's coming up on the show here today. That's coming up next right here on Locked On Vols. But first, I want to remind you guys about our friends over at Bet Online. The number one source for all your pro and football betting needs, sports information this season. Find all the latest football league developments, game matchups, news, podcasts, including this year's opening week games. BetOnline is also your continued source for all your sports wagering information, including live betting, esports, and scores. It's the latest and easiest way to check in on all your favorite sports and events, including Major League Baseball, MMA, boxing, and golf. Head to the website today, use your mobile device, learn about all the latest trends and all the action. Again, Tennessee, 11 points right now at Bet Online. You know, we'll see if you want to take it or if you want to take the Gators to cover. Nonetheless, Tennessee can still get a win either way. So, Bet Online, it is where the game starts. Well, it's Florida week, so I wanted to catch back up with my good buddy Boogie Bentley over at the Talking Vols podcast. Wanted to, uh, uh, catch up with you and do another little crossover, man. It's it's a huge week, dude. Um, I know a lot of uh, you know my viewers and your viewers and pretty much the entire fan base has just kind of been waiting on this the entire off season, and it's finally here. And Tennessee's three and zero. Yeah, huge huge opportunity coming up on Saturday. You know, we talk about fans always want to talk about is Tennessee back? When are they going to be back? It's kind of been like this in, endless cycle coaching carousel, but it feels like this is a huge opportunity for Josh Heupel to continue that momentum. What what he's done in just such a short time has been huge, but Saturday is a big big opportunity for this football program. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, I I say it. I think I've said this like already seventeen times, and it's only at the time of this recording Monday morning. But literally, it's uh. I, the stage is set. You've got sold out Nealon. You got Tennessee this three and zero. You got Tennessee number eleven in the AP. You got Checker Nealon. All right. You got CBS three thirty time slot. College game days on campus. I mean, what more could be added to this? One of my friends got mad at me that said you didn't mention Barstool. Apparently, Barstool is going to be doing a show oh, from, yeah. from campus as well. I mean, how many times has it been like this for Tennessee? And then Tennessee's dropped the ball. But I really do feel like. Just like we, you and I both have been talking about all offseason. I mean, if it's, I mean, I feel I, nothing's changed. I think Tennessee can win this football game. What I've seen from the Vols, what I've seen from Florida, I think Tennessee can win this football game. Yeah, it's as fans, it's it's battered Vol syndrome, right? Like you look at it on paper, you look at the ESPN FBI. It's got Tennessee like eighty seven percent chance. Tennessee, as of right now, I think they're favored by nine and a half. Like like you said, the stage is set. Just go take care of business. And I think you said, you just mentioned it now, you said it, I think, in the game day thread for the Akron game on VolQuest. Tennessee starts 3-0 and for the first time since 2016. But let, let's get a little crazy. 3-0 and first time since 2016. What also happened in 2000 Tennessee, uh, 2016? Tennessee went and beat the Gators inside of Neyland Stadium. Checker Neyland. Let's go ahead and break out the Smoky Grace. Let's repeat history, but I'm going to take it a step further. At the end of that sentence on the game day thread, you said Tennessee began that season at 5-0. and So let's go ahead and add LSU on the road, and let's go ahead and head in to Alabama undefeated. Let's do it. Let's just get crazy. That's what we do as fans. Be good for business, man. Hey, I, I, I'd I, be down for that. I, I think that'd be awesome. One game at a time, of course, and Josh Hype will get mad if he knew you were talking about three games in, in the future. Uh, one thing that is obviously of a storyline this week is the injury situation. Cedric Tillman, Jabari Small, uh, Dylan Sampson. Uh, no update at the time of this recording, of course, and as the week goes on, we won't get a public update from Josh Heupel, but maybe we'll get some news and all that type of stuff. But, I, you know, Boogie, if, if Tennessee doesn't have – Cedric Tillman, I feel like Tennessee's in a world of trouble. It doesn't mean Tennessee can't win, but Tennessee needs Cedric Tillman to, to play in this football game. Yeah, Cedric Tillman, huge, obviously. And, you know, Brew, Brew McCoy, I think, has the potential. And he kind of, he didn't have a huge game on Saturday. Of course, the touchdown gets called back for pass interference. That's a little ticky-tack. I'm way more concerned about the running back position with Jabari Small and Dylan Sampson both, which, you know, as soon as – Jabari Small got hit, and he starts grabbing the shoulder immediately. You flashback, triggered from last year, the shoulder injury, battled it all year. Uh, the running back is where, where I'm concerned. When you got four scholarship running backs, you know, we talk, the offseason narrative, Tennessee needs to add depth at running back. They looked in the portal. Lynn J. Dixon, uh, I think he was at Tennessee probably less time than I'm going to be on the show today. Uh, but, <laughs> you know, you got four scholarship running backs, and, and if Jabari Small and Dylan Sampson are both down, 
You're asking a lot. I, I, I like Jalen Wright. I think he's looked good. I think you mentioned on, on your show Monday, uh, you talked about how many carries he had in that Akron game. You, you don't want to see that. Uh, but it's, it's a lot to ask for Justin Williams-Thomas to step up as a true freshman in the Florida game when – you know, you're talking about the stage being set and, and the atmosphere and the energy college game day. That is a lot for a freshman to take on against Florida. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it's I, I thought Justin Williams Thomas looked a little bit better in the fourth quarter, but he's just not ready. Dylan Sampson continues to look good. Hopefully he'll come back. It's it's an ankle thing for Cedric. It's an ankle thing for for Dylan Sampson. Looked like a shoulder, maybe a stinger, but I, but again, he was Javari Small was kind of grabbing that shoulder. Uh, second play of the game, so we'll see what happens. Um, Jalen Wright, he's looked good. He's ran the ball hard. Um, I've really liked what I've seen from him, just holding on to the football. But, again, that's why they took a flyer on Lynn J. Dixon. He was so bad, but they just said, I, I understand it's not an ideal situation, but we need another body. And that's why they took a flyer on him, and that's, you know, that's ultimately didn't work out, and you're you're down to at ending that football game the other night with two scholarship running backs. So hopefully they'll get some guys back. We'll have to see. What have you thought about Tennessee so far this year? I mean, you know, two and oh, two wins against, you know, Mac opponents where they just beat the door down. It is what it is. Nice little overtime win on the road to Pittsburgh. I thought Tennessee showed a lot in that football game. Um, they showed a way to win it the way they hadn't won football games in, in recent memory. But three and oh, and there's been a lot of points and there's been a lot of uh, getting after the quarterback. What have you thought so far from Tennessee? Yeah, I mean, I think when you dumb it down and you just look at the grand scheme of things, wins and losses. You're you're three and zero. You're going into a huge game against Florida on Saturday, but Tennessee averaging fifty two points a game, fourth in the country in scoring offense. Defensively, only giving up fourteen point three, twenty seventh uh, nationally in scoring defense. And yeah, you talk you talk about the schedule. You you took care of business against Ball State. You took care of business against Akron. That pit game was big because Tennessee tried every way possible to give that game away. But oh, yeah. like you said, they found a way to come out with the win, and, and that's all that matters. Get get that win on the road. You're favored by a touchdown. You win by a touchdown in overtime. Uh, you know, they're, they're just taking care of business. There's, there are some things that excite me, and one of those – is Jalen Hyatt, just because I, I love the story. You know, I love the story, the offseason stuff, going to Bayless Jones saying, I'm, I'm not taking care of business, I'm not doing things the right way. And I've talked a lot about it on the Talking Balls Network, that it takes a man to admit, mm-hmm. I wasn't doing things the right way. But you can take it a step further. Now you got to prove it. You can talk about it all day long. You can talk about it all offseason. You can talk about it all fall camp. But now we're seeing him go out and do it on the field. Had a big day against Pitt. What do you have, 11 catches? And you follow that up with Akron, and it was a different Jalen Hyatt. You know, that Pitt game, 11 catches, and it was kind of dink and dunk, you know, short little check downs. And then he showed off the speed against Akron. I love the slant where he just – you talk about SEC speed. You saw the difference between SEC speed and Akron speed. He just took it to the house. Another thing I like is, is the defense and just the aggressiveness. You know, all the conversation coming out of that Ball State game, we, we didn't get home. We didn't get the quarterback down, and that was a concern. Uh, we're going to analyze. We're going to break things down and nitpick. That's what we do when you're trying to put out content. Uh, but we saw an aggressive defense against Pitt. You got Slovis to the ground. You hit him all day long. You put him out. Then you beat up the backup. They did the same thing against Akron. That, that kid – I think you called him. What you call him this morning on your show? You insulted I, that that kid has talent, but what a jerk! What a jerk! I tried to stay away from calling him a punk. I didn't want to call him a punk, but when I was watching when I, it live, and then when going back in the rewatch, I'm just sitting there and I'm like, man, what a punk! I mean, come on. Yeah, it's like, what are you what are you doing? You're you're getting destroyed, and then the stuff after the game. But kid has talent. He's he's a good player. Uh, Tennessee got after him, hit him. I'm excited. Yeah, I don't know if the back end can hold up. I don't know if the secondary can hold up. But I like just the aggressive. Let's just get aggressive and trust that if we give up a big play, that, that Hendon Hooker, Cedric Tillman, this offense is going to respond. I think that is the identity of this football team moving forward. And again, I think it's so unique. And it's it's a little bit of a trend right now. Hopefully it stops. But Hooker started these games off not throwing the football well. But then it, by game's end, you look back and it's like, God, what a, what a game. SEC Player of the Week, 18 of 14 or 14 of 18 for – you know, 298 and two touchdowns, have a game. But it's like, oh, but the, the first quarter wasn't good. Hopefully he kind of rectifies some of that and, and, and moves in the right direction because, you know, with a, with a team like Florida, you know, you don't want to get you don't want to get behind early because of a start like that. All right, last thing, Florida, one and two on the season. Big time win against Utah to start off the season. Uh, fell against Kentucky, or two and one, excuse me, escaped against South Florida but didn't look good. Looks like you can run the football on them. 
can't throw the football if you're Anthony Richardson. I don't think he's 100%, but still, what have you seen in Florida so far this year, and why do you like Tennessee? The, the blueprint's out there, right? I mean, the talking point all week long is going to be force Richardson to beat you with his arm. And that's what everybody on, on talk radio, on YouTube, on Ball Quest, everybody's going to be talking about it. That that's Everybody knows that that's the game plan. Now, listening to VolQuest, Rock Top Rewind last night, you guys talking to the Florida beat writer. Uh, it was interesting to hear him talk about Richardson and being beat up and not having that confidence to run the football. And if that's the case, I really like Tennessee's chances. Can, can you name me in the history of college football that an SEC quarterback three weeks into the season has more tackles than he has touchdown sure. passes? Like, is that is that even a thing? Like, I, I just... I like Tennessee's chances in this game. Now, Florida does have some talent, man. At the running back position, Johnson averaging almost 10 yards a carry, and that's not just a couple of plays. You're talking about 25 carries on the season, averaging 9.6 yards a carry. Uh, ATN, I think he's a good running back. They've got some talent, uh, but I I just like Tennessee's odds in this game. I think think Richardson's going to continue to make mistakes. I like Tennessee – you know, Rodney Garner talked a lot about this a few weeks ago, staying in your rushing lanes, keeping him, keeping quarterbacks bottled up and not letting them escape. And I thought they did that a little bit against Akron. That's a mobile quarterback. Of course, he was beat up too. Uh, we'll see if they're able to do it on Saturday. Everybody knows that's a talking point. That's, that's the key to getting out of Neyland Stadium with a victory. Well, I mean, I feel like it's weird because Pittsburgh was a very important game and Pittsburgh was good. And, you know, that trip to Pittsburgh was fun. But, like, I, I feel like – I feel like football season starting now, if that makes sense. Like, I mean, you got you got Florida, you got Tennessee sold out. Yeah, I mean, again, I just I feel like it's now. So obviously you're looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. Everybody watching, looking forward to it and listen to it. Um, hey man, you're live a couple times a week. You know, what what what's what days do you go live? Where can people find if they're unfamiliar with the Talking Balls Network, where can they find your work and your guys' work? We're all over YouTube. That's where everything's at. You know, it started as a podcast, so some people call it a podcast. Guys on our show call it a podcast. It's the Talking Balls Network on YouTube. We're knocking on the door of 15,000 subscribers. Make it happen. Let's get it done by the Florida game by Saturday. Let's get 15,000 subscribers in there. We are live after every game within a matter of moments, and it's chaos because our selling point is for the fans, by the fans. We're not media. We're not experts. Uh, We are just like you guys. You, You guys... For the fans, by the fans is our motto. It's chaotic. It's emotional. We yell and scream. We disagree. That's what it is. It's a lot of fun. Also, go go live on Sunday nights uh, at 6.30 p.m. Eastern time. I play NCAA football, but it's, it's just a laid-back conversation. We talk Tennessee football the entire night. Uh, we go live Tuesday night at 9 o'clock late night talking balls. It's a fan call-in show. Uh, you guys get to come on and run the show. It's a good time. We give you a voice. We make it your platform. And then every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Eastern time uh, is our regular talking balls live show. So a lot of content, a lot of videos. Uh, but for the fans, by the fans, that's what we're all about over at the Talking Balls Network. Hey, and let's return the favor. Now, I got a major push from the Talking Balls crew, you know, whenever I was saying, hey, let's get the 3K, let's get the 3K. I'm not expecting you to get as big of a push, but if you're listening, if you're watching, you're unfamiliar with the Talking Balls Network, go find them on YouTube, hit that subscribe button, help them out. They do awesome work, as you pointed out. They're live a couple times a week, and so let's help them out. Let's do that. Let's help them get to 15K. Boogie, appreciate it, man. He's at Boogie Bentley on Twitter. Give him a follow. Let's do it again soon. Maybe next week or the maybe Alabama week. Let's, let's let's touch base Alabama week. All right. Sounds good to me, man. Let's do it. The more crossover, the better. Let's keep growing each other's platforms. Yes, sir.